Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about positioning the bulkheads for this plywood boat onto the strongback and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. During the week, I bought a bit more plywood, so the plywood budget's gone up a little bit. I also finished cutting the rest of the bulkheads. One last thing I need to cut out though is some temporary supports for the transom. I'll show you that. These you actually start doing from measurements. In fact, everything from now on we cut using measurements from the plan as opposed to tracing. When the transom goes on the strong back, it gets held up in position temporarily by these bits of timber here and this is what we're making next. There's also another temporary sort of stem frame here and I've got that built over there somewhere already. That was traced from the plan. But this one we're doing for measurements that are here. The transom sits at an angle. So to do this cut here, we have to measure up 457 to here, and then we'll draw a line, and then we use 19 millimeters of that line. Here I've got the square just on my mark here, and then I've got the correct measurement across, 245 here, and this will give us our point. We know that's square. down, get this square on the factory corner and then I'll just clamp it on while I trace it so I don't accidentally bump it. And there we go, two the same. Alright, I'll put these aside. Now I'm going to clear the decks, get everything off the strong back and we'll start notching it out to put our centre string line. Before I start cutting the notches so I can put this centre string line, I'm just confirming this strong back is level which it seems to be. So far so good. Bubbles centered and if I spin it, it's centered both ways. So pretty comfortable with that. Now what I need to do is just very roughly measure the center here, which I think was 610 mil, I'll check that. And then I'm just gonna notch a section out that the string line can run through, but it's gonna be recessed down so it doesn't snag on any of the bulkheads or anything. The way this works is that one side is gonna be our baseline reference line. So when I have to measure forward a certain distance to figure out where a bulkhead goes, I'm going to measure it on that one side alone and then transfer it to the other side using a large square, probably an off-cut of plywood. By doing that, it doesn't actually matter if the two sides of the strong back are parallel. They could be slightly off, but the line I'm drawing will be perpendicular to the baseline and that's all that matters. All right, now I'm going to do this string line. What I'm actually going to do is measure the exact distance in from this reference line, mark it down the face of these thought chip beams. That way when I notch it out, I'll still be able to see the mark. I could use either side as my baseline. I'm gonna use this side because it's more accessible. So I'm gonna come across 610, making sure my tape measure is parallel to the beam. And I'll do that all the way along. Now I'm going to use those lines to notch out a section, probably only about 20 mil deep, just enough so I can have the head of the nail on the string down. When I spoke to Mark on the phone earlier, he was saying that because the boat has a rise in the bow, the top deck rises up, and we're building the boat upside down, that bow's obviously going to come down. So with this notch at the front, we're actually going to notch it a little bit deeper, maybe 30 mil or so, 30 or 40. That way there's actually a space, a gap in the beam, for that temporary stem frame to travel through instead of hitting against here. The notching technique for this is exactly the same as I used for the leg, so I'll just do that quickly. What I'm gonna do now is put a nail in the front face here so it's not in the way of the stem frame. At the back, I'm gonna put it on the top so that the string's free to move under tension. Nail on the outside of the beam here at the front through the center line. And then here I've got a nail on the centre line on the top, but lower than the notch. Bit of garden variety bricklayer's line. I've gone with yellow, but it's also fine to use blue. At this end I've used a blood knot type thing, because, you know, it's closer to fishing line than rope. I'll give it plenty of tension. And then take a couple of turns on the nail, that way it'll hold it. And then I can even just do a couple of half hitches around the line itself. By a happy coincidence, one of the cuts I did with the saw blade is actually dead on this centre line. So if I lay the string down that cut, it's dead centre. And there we go. So, this is our baseline. That corner there is our reference point. 
and this is our center line. This is just somewhere we're going to make some marks on. We're not going to take any measurements from this particular side at all. What I've done next is cut some tubitus. Don't ask me why, I go all imperial when I talk about timber. But they're going to go a thwart chip, and that's what I'm going to screw down onto the strong back, and then the bulkhead's going to screw into it to sort of position them. But what I need to do earlier when we cut out these transom frames, temporary frames, we need to come up a distance here, 60 odd millimetres, and then we need to screw a 2x2 two two onto there as well, so it can sit on the strong back and get positioned. So I'm going to measure these out, screw these on, and we'll put these in first, because I'm going to start measuring from the back and go forward. Now I've got two of these, we can go and install on the back. What I'm going to do is take a measurement from the end of the strong back to a position in front of the start of the string, mark it, then I'm going to use a square to transfer that mark onto the far side, and then I'm going to screw these both onto the strong back. All right, I'm going to call this one 250 millimetres. Mark's recommendation then for a large enough square is to simply take the factory corner of a piece of ply that you've cut a bulkhead out and use that to mark the other side. And that sounds reasonable enough to me. Gives you a nice long edge to ensure the accuracy and easily reaches the other side. I'm also going to do a few other checks for square and plumb with these bits of ply. I don't think you can check enough times different ways to make sure something's right, because all these sort of errors can compound. What these frames are for, even though they're temporary, is for holding our transom in position. Before I do this though, I've actually got to glue two of these transoms together. They're both cut from 9mm ply, so I end up with an 18mm thick transom plus the fibreglass that goes on the outside. But that's the idea of these frames. I can't put this transom in properly and centre it and everything until I've finished laminating the two together. But I'm not going to do that now because it's actually quite hot today. We're right in the middle of the day. So what I'm going to do is glue that first thing in the morning when it's a bit cooler and then let it set during the day. In the meantime though, we'll go and put these other bulkheads in. The next bulkhead along is bulkhead number five. but in the tradition of naming them after people who have helped pay for them. I'm going to call this one Neil after Neil Kingham, so thanks very much for your donation. Our next step is to figure out exactly where Neil has to go on the strong back. The position we're after is 658 millimetres back from this edge of the transom support. That looks pretty good now, so I'll just run a line down and across. Next thing I'll do is get our big square again. Now I've got it transferred to the other side, I'm going to take one of my 2 by 2s and put it on the inside of that line towards the back of the boat, as per the plan. Another thing we have to have is a centre line marked on our bulkhead. So I'm going to measure both the total width, the width in here, see if they agree with each other, see how they line up to the peak, all that kind of stuff, and then mark that on. What I'm going to do now, put it in place, clamp it on, then I might just need to shuffle it until this centre line is directly above the string line. I've temporarily blocked this string line up a little bit so that it doesn't contact any of the other timbers. Then if we look here, we can see that this is actually a little bit off to the right. It's the right hand line I'm trying to line up with. So I need to tap this bulkhead a bit to the left before I screw it in place. Okay, Neil's looking pretty happy in his new home now. Centered, and then clamped onto this bit of two by two going across. So now I'm gonna put some screws, it will be temporary, through the ply into the two by two. It's now Sunday afternoon. I've just been out filming this morning for my motorcycle channel, so running out of time this weekend. We'll put up this next bulkhead, but before I do, I'll just show you something that I didn't really film when I was cutting them out. Although you need the bulkheads complete like this because they have to sit at their correct height and this little addition here is what gives them the height. But all this actually is going to get cut out once the boat gets flipped over. So what I've done is pre-cut it all, except for one last little bit here, 
and then put a few of these butt blocks on to hold it in place and we're going to put it up. That way it's really easy to cut this out, one cut here, one cut there, once the boat's the right way up. So that's something I probably should have shown in the first video on cutting the bulkheads out. And to continue the tradition, David Hankin made a donation to help pay for this bit of ply. So this can be bulkhead David. The next reference line along is another 831. What I've done here then is taken this previous total measurement, added 831. So I'm going to measure 2318 from the very back here, and then I'll measure this gap to make sure it adds up to 831. So it gives me a bit of a double check that I've got the right distance. In the case of this bulkhead, the batten here is going to go on the forward side of the reference line. So I'll just clamp that in place and then we'll screw that down. As you can see here, bulkhead David also needs some bracing, so I'll put that on now. Get that as close as I can with the spirit level. This is bulkhead number three up. Big thanks to John Duncan for his donation to pay for this one. All right, now we're getting to the pointy end. Well, that's all the bulkheads up now. I still need to brace the front one, bulkhead number one, or Jeremy, as we know it. Next step for me is to laminate the two transom plates together, then I'll probably plane them a little bit to make them even to each other. Because one is traced from the other, one's slightly larger than the other because of the pencil width, etc. So I'll neaten all that up. Next thing we need to do then is start making the longitudinals. Now, the longitudinals and the sides of the boat, and the bottom and the sides, are all made from six mil ply, so they're thinner but they're longer than a single sheet of ply. So one of the techniques we'll be looking at there is joining, butt joining those pieces of ply together. Looking down the bulkheads, I think they're okay, you know, they're not perfect, but the really good thing is speaking to Mark, they don't need to be. You don't want a tight join pretty much anywhere in this style of building. Every join is supposed to have epoxy in the join. So gaps are actually good within reason. What is really important ultimately is that the outside of the hull is true and fair because that's what's going to affect how the boat runs through the water. Everything else comes secondary to that. It'll be a couple of weeks now before I get another video up on this project. I think it's going to take me a while to find the time to put all these sides and, and longitudinals together. So in the meantime, we'll probably do a couple more mechanical videos. All right, well, thanks for watching. Time to go home now and sort of get a little bit of a Sunday afternoon off and I'll catch you soon. See ya.